Hey, what's up? Welcome to Walt's How To's and Reviews. Today, I'm gonna do a how to buy an air compressor and I'm gonna review the air compressor that I bought. When shopping for an air compressor, there's so many variables and a lot of marketing comes into play. It's really hard to know what is the best value, the best bang for your buck, when you're trying to categorize and compare so many different things. You got horsepower, PSI, number of gallons in the tank, the CFM, the SCFM, you know, this one's loud, this one's not, this one runs on a regular 120 volt, this is a 220 volt, this one takes oil, this one isn't, this one's got two tanks and a small, this one's huge. You just don't really know what you're paying for and it's really confusing and I think it's on purpose just to try to sell more air compressors. So when shopping for an air compressor, you definitely wanna answer these questions. Why are you shopping for one? Is it just gonna be a one and done use? Or do you wanna grow into it, maybe get more than you need? Two, is portability important to you? Do you have enough room in your garage to store a huge air compressor? Would you ever wanna take this to a job site or maybe a friend's house? And then is there any other little things that might be important to you, like that it runs off of a regular plug-in, that it is quiet, that it doesn't take oil so you don't have to maintain it, little things like that. So I'm gonna explain how I comprehend air compressors in my head, and I hope that really helps you understand of how they work and what's the best way to shop for them, because I know it really is confusing. I'm gonna try to simplify it the best way I can for you to really try to give you a good understanding so you know what to look for when you go to buy an air compressor. So first, I wanna talk about that use, why you're gonna use it. If it's just filling up tires, I mean, the smallest, cheapest one will work, but you're most likely gonna run a tool off of it. Now, in my head, there's two kinds of tools. Ones that need continuous air supply, and then others that just need a short burst. So a continuous air supply one would be like a sander, a grinder, something that's like and you're gonna keep it on. And then the ones that need like a short burst is more like a nail gun where it's like and it's just a real quick short burst and that's it. And that's drastically gonna change what kind of air compressor you're looking for. Now, in my head, you know, automotive guys, mechanics, they're looking for tools that need a lot more continuous versus the carpenter, the you know roofers and framers, they need one that need, that's more about short burst. In general, I'm not saying that's true for everyone, but in my head, you know, if I'm gonna be buying this for like a nail gun purpose, I'm not gonna worry too much about maybe one day I want a racket wrench. It's like, I'll just go ahead and buy an electric one so I don't have to worry about that. I don't need to overpay now for something that I might use when a lot of the electrical stuff is pretty darn cheap. So knowing what kind of category you fall in and what you're gonna use it for, I think will tremendously help. And those tools have different needs, which is gonna tell you what kind of air compressors you wanna be looking for. They're gonna tell you the PSI they need. Most are 90, some are less, some are more, most are 90. And then more importantly, it's gonna tell you how much air it needs to run, and they measured that in a thing called CFM, which stands for cubic feet per minute. Now you might see SCFM, and the reason they put the S is it's standardized or standard, because whether you're at the ocean level or on top of a mountain, whether it's negative 10 degrees or 115 degrees, whether it's 15% humidity or 100% humidity, the way that air works and compressing it is gonna be affected by those variables. So the S means that all those variables are the same, they're standardized. Now what's really confusing and hard to know about this is your tool says it needs a certain amount of CFM and knowing what the air compressor can actually put out in terms of CFM is actually a lot trickier and more difficult than one might think. It might say it can do this CFM, but none of them do more than that, and almost all the ones that you're buying for residential use, meaning getting out of the hardware store, putting it in your garage, don't actually produce that CFM. The actual compressor itself doesn't. So let me explain a little bit more of what I mean by that. First, let's talk about the two components of the air compressors we're talking about today. They have a storage component and then a little motor that actually compresses the air and puts it into the storage component. Now, let's just focus on that storage component. It's gonna be quantified in terms of gallons. Really small ones, you can get down to a gallon, you have 30 gallons, 40, 50, 60, 100. They get pretty big. So that tells you how big the tank is. Now the PSI stands for pressure per square inch. I don't wanna waste a bunch of time getting into it, but you can think of it as when you dive down into water, you can feel the pressure. It's like that. The atmosphere actually has 
pressure. It's like 14.7 pounds at sea level where it's actually pushing in on you. And you think of it, if you're actually in the tank, you would feel that pressure around you. Kind of like when you go deep down into water because the water's heavy, it gets denser as you go down. But all you need to know is more PSI means more air is gonna be in the tank regardless of the size. So 120 PSI versus 175 PSI means the pressure in the tank is higher in that 175 PSI. So even though they're both 30 gallons, the 175 PSI will actually hold more air. So the reason those are important is the bigger the tank, the longer it takes for the pressure in the tank to drop down. So let's say the tank holds 120 pounds per square foot PSI. Your tool lets air out at 90 PSI. When you turn the tool on, air is gonna come out of the storage tank into the atmosphere and it's slowly gonna drop until it actually equalizes. As soon as the pressure in the tank matches the PSI of the tool, the tool is no longer operating at 100% efficiency, but that's why bigger tanks are better. It can run that tool, even without a compressor, it can run that tool longer. If you have a higher PSI, you, know, you start at 175, you turn on the tool, it goes down to 150, you're still higher than the tank that's 120. That's why that's important. Theoretically, if a tool only needs 90 PSI, any size tank that's higher than that will be able to run that tool for a certain amount of time. It might be a microsecond, but it's gonna work, even a tiny one gallon tank. But if you have a 100 gallon tank at 175 PSI, it's gonna be able to run that tool for quite a while without actually even needing more air. And that's one of the reasons why it's difficult to determine, will your compressor run this tool? I mean, theoretically it will, but if it doesn't have much air, it's not gonna run it for very long. Now this is where the actual compressor comes into play. So the compressor has a bunch of different, you know, horsepower and maybe some other things on there, but what's important is the speed at which the compressor can compress air. And that's measured by CFM. So it's telling you, hey, this compressor, this motor, can compress the air at this speed. Unfortunately, there's a lot of deceitful marketing going on when it comes to the air compressors that you buy at a hardware store and put in your garage. And what it says the CFM is, is almost never the true CFM. I don't wanna get into the weeds there and go down this long rabbit hole. If you're interested in that topic, just research it, Google it, and you'll see a bunch of stuff come up. Companies have even gotten in trouble for marketing with this info when it's not necessarily true. And I don't know what the consequences are, and I believe it's still going on. So that's why you can't solely depend on what the motor says the CFM is. But the reason it is important is it's a good way to get a relative idea. You know, the bigger the motor, the more CFM. The more horsepower, the more CFM. If this one says five CFM, this one says six CFM, theoretically the six VFM should be moving air at a higher speed, especially if it's the same brand, you definitely know that. If it's two different brands, who knows? It's hard to say, but I think that's important to know because you really do have to think about tank size when it comes to a compressor because it's both things coming at play. A lot of people will recommend get 30% more CFM than you need. So if a tool says it needs one CFM, buy a compressor that says it can do 1.3 to try to offset some of that as well as some other variables. But if you really think about it, let's say that you have a tool that needs one CFM and your compressor can do two CFM, why would you need a tank? And other than the motor will actually burn out because it's not made for continuous use, it's supposed to be off and on, off and on. If that wasn't a factor, you really don't need a tank. And some of those big industrial compressors that have huge diesel engines that you like tow at the back of a truck and stuff, they actually don't have a tank. They're not storing any air anywhere. It's just a big, strong compressor that can do it in real time. It's sending the air out at a high enough pressure to where it doesn't need to store it anywhere. So I hope that helps understand and comprehend like what you're looking for in a compressor and there's a lot of different variables that come into play but those are the most important and yeah if you just need it for the tools that have quick bursts don't need much CFM you really don't need to buy that big of a compressor it gets a little hairy because like say you are a framer or a roofer it is a short burst but you know some roofers are psh, 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 they're constantly it's not nearly as bad as a sander but you're gonna want a high powered motor that can keep up that can refill that reservoir that storage tank really quickly you don't want some tiny little like 0.3 cfm it's just not going to be able to keep up with you 
could probably do one burst, then wait a bunch, refill it. But I think that helps you understand how you'd go about shopping for a compressor. Now, rather than going over all the different variables and making this video super long, I'm just gonna go over my specific example, the inputs and the needs that I had when shopping for a compressor, and hopefully by explaining how I arrived to buying the one I bought, will help you get a better understanding of how this worked. And then of course, lastly, I'm gonna give you my review and input on the compressor that I bought. So let's talk about the inputs that I had. Super big input, which I think is one of the most important is what and how you're gonna use this for. I'm gonna use it for residential use, meaning super light. Maybe I'll use it once a year. So think about it. If I use it once a year and this thing's only gonna work 12 times, it's gonna last me 12 years. If I use it once a month though, this thing's only gonna last me one year. With that being said, knowing I'm gonna use it for very light use, I was perfectly fine with going with the cheapest option I could go with. And I'm fine with saying I'm cheap too. I wanted to get one at the best bang for my buck, you know, highest specs at the lowest cost. And I don't know if it's durable or gonna last long, it's been working so far, but light use therefore being super cheap was the biggest input for me. All right, I am not a car guy, I'm not a mechanic. I'm never gonna plan on running, you know, a racket wrench or a grinder or a sander. If I ever needed one of those tools, I would just go buy a cheap electric one. I didn't wanna pay for a really big compressor that could run those because it's just not what I do. I do like to build things. You know, I put up crown molding, I built some shelving, so I do like nail guns. So I just needed a compressor that could run all nail guns. That's what I was looking for. The last two inputs I had were contradicting each other. So one thing I wanted to be able to do with my compressor was blow out my sprinklers. I live in a cold climate where I have to do that every year and I'd rather do it myself than pay somebody. I figured that would pay off the compressor. So that was something that I wanted to do. The other thing though was I wanted it to be small and portable. I don't have a lot of room in my garage so I didn't want it to take up much space. Plus I wanted it to be portable because I know maybe I would bring it to a job site. Maybe I would let my buddies use it. Maybe I would go blow out someone else's sprinkler. I just knew that I wanted to be able to fit it in my car and I drive a sedan so I needed it to be small. And those contradict each other because to blow out sprinklers, you're basically taking your sprinkler line and removing the water and filling it up with air. So you need a large capacity of air. So you either need a huge tank or a motor that could push a lot of air really quickly. So I was kind of in a conundrum there. So with that being said though, I did know a couple things. One is I needed a small tank volume so it was portable. But then the second thing was I wanted a pretty powerful motor that could do a high CFM and just refill the tank often so that I wasn't limited to not too many tools. And if I ever wanted to use more, I had that option as well as to try to help blow out my sprinklers. So I'm just going to show you the one I bought and also how I solved not having enough volume to actually blow out my sprinklers in an efficient, good way. All right, so this is the compressor I bought. First thing, like I was saying, I'm not gonna use it much, so I wasn't worried about durability, so I just wanted to go cheap, and yeah, let's just face it, <laughs> I'm cheap, I guess. And when it comes to this brand, Central Pneumatic, that sold at Harbor Freight, it's the cheapest air compressors you're gonna buy. If you're looking at the specs like CFM, and gallons and PSI and stuff, by far, no matter what size you get, the ones at Harbor Freight are the cheapest. Now, when it comes to portability and being really small, I can actually pick this up. It's pretty easy. You can see it's pretty small. It does actually fit into the trunk of most sedan cars. And when I store this, I actually put it right here. So you can see it doesn't take up much room at all. It's extremely efficient in terms of space. It's easy to move around, portable because it's on wheels. Check that off my list. So the next thing I wanted, because I want to be able to have my cake and eat it too, I wanted very small and portable, but super powerful. Now, it doesn't hold a lot of actual air. It's only 10 gallons, but you can see this is a very big motor on a very small tank. And this motor does a lot of power, at least it says it does. They're claiming at 90 PSI, this thing will do 5.3 cubic feet per minute. And at 40 PSI, it'll do 6.2 CFM. So that's a pretty powerful motor on such a small tank, but that's what I was looking for. Now, will this blow out my sprinklers? When you blow out your sprinklers, you're looking between 40 and 60 PSI. So you fill this tank up. So then I start blowing my sprinklers out. It's dropping down from 125. And I know it's good until it gets down to, 
you know, what, I'm, what my output is, which is around 50 PSI, it clicks on and it's starting to pump in air as it's dropping and it continues to drop and it equalizes and it's enough to do about one section of my sprinklers. So then I have to let it refill all the way back up, do another round, refill all the way back up, do another round. And even with that being said, I get a little paranoid that man, did it really get all the water out? So I end up doing it twice for each round, but it is actually able to blow up my sprinklers. It just takes a really, really long time. And I do have a solution for that. I made another video I'll put at the end of how I did that. It was like one of my first videos. It's terrible. I just made it on my phone real quick, but I'll show you kind of going with that theme of portable and whatnot. I have two more tanks that I hide up there and I actually attach those tanks to this guy, which just speeds up and makes blowing my sprinklers out way easier. I also have a lot of compressor line up there because a lot of times I'll just run this in the garage since it's really loud and run my line inside to wherever I need to go. So that's how I was able to satisfy all the needs that I had and still be able to blow out my sprinklers and all that. When you're shopping, you can find ones with lower CFM and not as powerful as a motor, but a lot bigger tank. And you're kind of playing that balancing act, but now it's not gonna be as portable. So it's really up to you and your personal needs. I really hope that helped. Now I'm gonna review this actual central pneumatic, 10 gallon, two and a half horsepower, 125 PSI air compressor. Now I've used this, you know, I did crown molding in my house. I put up some shelving. I did the baseboard trim in my basement and I've done a bunch of other little random stuff. I was trying to count how many times I've used it and I think it was about 20 times. Sometimes like crown molding, that definitely took, I think like a week. So that, I just counted that as one. Or other times, you know, on a stroller, I needed to fill up some air in a tire, like a bicycle tire. So I counted that as one as well. And then I've blown up my sprinklers four times. So I know I've had this for at least four years and it's still working. You do have to put oil in it and I've never replaced the oil. It says that it still has enough oil in there. So obviously I haven't used it a ton, but it uh, continues to work and it's great. The only gripe I have with this, and I really need to express this was my fault and my user error, is I took it to a friend's house to help him blow out his sprinklers. And it was in, I had a forerunner at the time it was in the back of there. When I drove home, I didn't secure it down. And I took a turn and the thing fell over on its side like this. And there's actually an air intake, little uh, filter that goes in here for the air that goes in there. That broke off. I think I super glued it back on and then it uh, fell off again, but I've actually left it off and I'm sure that's not good for the machine, but it works fine. I don't use it in a high dust area. I usually, since I have a long hose, keep it here and I do the work somewhere else. But the point is I'm not worried if it breaks. I feel like I got more than enough value out of it, but it was a cheap air intake where that broke. Okay, now the other thing that broke, because obviously they're not expensive or durable parts, is this, this output gauge right here, which I'll just show you what that looks like. This pressure gauge broke when it fell over. Now luckily the regulator still works, works great, and all I did is put another pressure gauge right here, so that way I run my line off of this guy and I can see what the output pressure is, so I'm still able to use it, but just from taking one tiny little fall, this broke, the air intake broke. I imagine if you got an expensive, heavy duty, nice one that was portable, that wouldn't happen. So you could argue you get what you pay for, but I'm totally okay with that and still feel like I got a great value and I'm still happy with this purchase. So with that being said, you know, if I had to rate it on a scale of one to 10, I would give it a nine out of 10. Nine just because those things did break pretty easily. And again, that was my fault. Again, I've only used it like 20 times. Let's say that it breaks later on this year when I go to use it again. In that case, maybe I wouldn't rate it so high, but I can't say how long this will or will not last. I've had it for years, works great, but I don't use it much. And forgetting the four or five years I've gotten out of this and doing the jobs I've done, yeah, I feel like I was more than happy with spending the money and I would highly recommend it. I'll put the link to this guy in the description. I'll also throw in some other compressors with different pros and cons, like maybe smaller motor, bigger tank size in the description if you wanna check them out. Hey guys, I spent a lot of time on these videos and I really try to get you the information you're seeking in an organized and efficient manner. That's why I have timestamps in the description and at the beginning of my video so that you can skip ahead and just get the information you're needing. If you like that, let me know by giving me a thumbs up and if you really like it, please subscribe. 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.